Hello and welcome back to Tommy's Top Picks Weekly Roundup Podcast, Episode 15. I'm your host, Tommy. I'm joined by John. Hey, how's it going? And I'm joined by Murphy. Hello. And we are all together for the first time, three of us doing the podcast. Yep. Should be fun. Yeah. So before we get into things, I want to pump our YouTube channel and because we are sponsored by our YouTube channel. You should like, you should subscribe, ring the bell so you get notification every time we put up a video. Do you like comics? We just started talking about comics again. So check out our comic videos. And yeah, on our Patreon, we have box offering, bat box openings available. So you can, when you join the Patreon, you get access to our Discord. You can play games with us. You can chat with us. So the discussions we have on the podcast, we're having also in the Discord as the week goes by. You can be part of those discussions. And you can have us open boxes for you and then mail them to you. Those are the perks right now. Um, yeah, and our Discord is per- pretty active, pretty awesome. And uh, I will say... It's a good group of uh, people. Oh, yeah, like 80% of our conversations here on the podcast are derived out of conversation we had over the previous week, you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, you can help inform the podcast if you join it. Um, so yeah, how was y'all's week? Uh, what'd you do? What'd you play? What'd you read? John, you first? Yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, played some uh, Blitz with my buddy Chris over TTS mm-hmm. and then uh, some Sorcery as well. And uh, Sorcery was a lot of fun. That game, it just continues to impress me. Uh, we did kind of randomize which decks we played, so it was a different combo I hadn't seen before, and it was it was very amusing. It got down to both of us on Death's Door. Nice, it was very fun. cool. Yeah, it was it was a very fun game. I was like, oh, this game just it really gr- brings the like intensity of that last moment. Right. Yeah, that is what I like about Sorcery. And you can play the same decks against each other and just have very different outcomes each time. Very different. Yep. We saw cards they'd never seen before. I was like, what? I didn't yeah, know that checks card. out. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I look through the deck afterwards, I was like, I didn't see this card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Murphy, how was your week? That was good. I mean, on the comic side of things, I've been catching up. I went to my, my local store and picked up a giant stack of comics. Nice. About nice. A, a month's worth. Uh, finally finished up all the new Amazing Spider-Man stuff leading into the, the reboot. Yeah, uh, super excited for that. And, you know, just picked up some of the stuff that we talked about in our video the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, trying to stay on top of it and make sure that, you know, I'm up with all the good the books that are coming out. So I, I have a question I got to throw it out there because you mentioned Amazing Spider-Man. I just saw the the latest Spider-Man movie where they start the like multi-dimension phase of you know uh, I guess MCU whatever they're calling it. Yeah. Um, I for me that is such hype. One just the bringing the actors together. I thought that was hilarious and fun. But the whole uh, Doctor Strange two previews that I'm seeing, I'm I'm excited for it. Is that something that you, as a comic person, are excited for, or do you prefer the comics and the movies are just kind of like you know fan service or something like that? What do, you, what do you think about that? So I just actually just bought myself a single ticket to the Thursday premiere of Doctor Strange two. <laughs> All right, then <laughs> we're on the same page. <laughs> I'm gonna be going alone on a Thursday. Um, awesome. But no, so the the movies have been an interesting turn for me because like. You know, I read I read comics as a kid when it wasn't really cool to be a nerd. Right, right. And then so it, it, it's kind of like I love the movies because I feel like they were made for me, even though I know they were made to bring in new audiences and hit a, a broader crowd. But like now it's like cool to be a nerd. Mm-hmm. So I get a little angry sometimes. <laughs> it's fair. I now, like, like, don't take my coolness. <laughs> yeah, like the the people who come up to me talking about the Green Goblin while I've got like a Green Goblin. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I, I can't imagine because like I have not read the comics. I know the movies. So if yeah. I try to talk to you about the world, you'll be like, you have it all wrong. You have it yeah, all so, wrong. <laughs> see, there, so there are the new fans who don't know anything but the movies, and that's where it is, you know? And that's that's perfectly fine. I can talk about the movies. But then there are the new fans who know only the movies, but they don't realize that's all they know. Right. So, it, you know, it, I feel like the movies have done great for the industry specifically. But, you know, sometimes it... They think they're a comic book expert because they've seen the movie. 
It sounds like it sounds a little bit like you might be a comic book hipster. Is that yes. a proper description of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it was I was there before it was cool. I was here first. Oh, yeah. um, right on. Right but no, so I, I do love the movies, and this one specifically. I I'm I hyped for this. I can't. I wait. love the last Spider-Man movie. You know, I, I heard a lot of people were you know they had different thoughts about it. But I mean, Willem Dafoe came back. I know it was so good. Yeah. It was so good. And part of his contract, he said he would only come back if he got to do his own stunts. Oh, so, Jesus. Like all the scenes of him just destroying Spider Man, like through that building, or, you know, it was actually yeah. what? Willem Dafoe. I can't believe that. It's wild. It's wild. Uh, and like, I, I thought they missed the mark. They could have had the Sinister Six, you know, yeah. instead of just five villains. But, Almost. you know. That's yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Sony's trying real hard to make all these villain movies. I feel like they'll attempt a Sinister Six movie at some point. Got to build up to it. Well, I heard Morbius is just god awful. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, yeah I've heard same things. I did watch uh, Moon Knight. Is that that's what it's called, Moon Knight? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm enjoying that. I was like, wow, this is really good. This is like back up there. Cause I think the last few kind of like Disney Plus release things I've been like, mm, you know, some of them are good, some of them are bad, but this the Moon Knight one was I'm I'm happy with that one. Yeah, Moon Knight to me, the show is gonna be interesting because you know, Moon Knight's a major character, but he's also not super known to the you know, non comic reading people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, so it's kind of like when they their whole model has always been like they take lesser known characters and they turn them into something crazy, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. Yeah. Who knew about Guardians of the Galaxy before Guardians of the Galaxy movie? Yeah, exactly. So it's like Moon Knight, I think, is doing a very good job. Uh, I also like. I might be in love with Oscar Isaac. <laughs> it's also <laughs> fair. Just like generally, so uh, I've enjoyed that show too. I mean, I'm a I'm a Star Wars fan, so uh, when when I saw that, I was like, "Oh, wait, this is great! This is like <laughs> all, multiple of my favorite things all happening at once." How can I uh, how can I turn this down? And then it's really well done. Like, the, it's really good story. It doesn't feel like it's some of the series feel a little hokey, you know, like they're trying to stretch a little bit to make it a series, and this did not at all. So I was I was pleased. So far, I'm, we'll see. I'm excited about this one because it's the first one of the new shows that's not like. It's not continuing on old characters. Right. It's a new, you know, yeah. WandaVision set up Scarlet Witch for this Doctor Strange movie. Yeah. Which I actually, I can't, I like, I like the transition to this next phase. I think it's, it, I, I am most excited about what's coming. And I've been watching these movies since they started coming out. Heck, I went to several with Tommy and <laughs> I'm like, Tommy, what, what is that? What is that? Why is it? What is this happening? I don't understand. Tell me the comic book side of it. <laughs> So he explained a lot of it to me, but now I'm slowly getting, uh, you know, kind of caught up through the through the movies at least. But mm-hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward to this this next set. Yeah, and I mean, Kang the Conqueror is coming. Yeah, yeah. right. Like it's they coming. set that up so well in Loki. Good God, I'm so yeah. excited. Jonathan Majors is just he's so good. Like his his one little scene was just the best part of that show to me. It really was. Really was. Sorry, now I've totally set us off the rails. Uh, That's okay. But I had to we'll ask. eventually get back to our main topic. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to our main topic. But yeah, uh, yeah. out of usuals, any spicy pulls you had this week? Uh, I did not. I did okay. not pull anything this week. In fact, for my market update, I did data analytics stuff. Right, right. that was You're really coming cool. next week. Yeah. If you have not was- seen our data analytics video for our weekly market update this past Thursday. You should go watch it. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I started to do uh, series data. I've been promising it for a while because I've been doing it in the background. It's what I look at and reference. But um, I have the visualization, the first visualization up. It's very, very basic. But um, the next day, because I got so hyped about it, uh, I went in and started building some dynamic um, actual charting and stuff. So uh-huh. this week, I'll show that off and let nice. people take a look at it and you know maybe it ends up being a tool that we offer to patrons i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes it, it needs more data it's very early still but it's yeah. uh, coming together i'm i'm having fun with it mm-hmm. um, i opened the Metazoo spell spellbook and i opened the uh, castro society bundle that video's up 
uh, you can go watch it. But I plan on opening all the products that were in it. So expect multiple MetaZoo uh, openings coming up this week. And I also have two boxes of the Magicast that I'm going to open that I'm super excited about. That's cool. Yeah. It's, a, it's one I'm of those a... mini eight card sets. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to say, I'm very impressed with the Caster Society bundle. I mean, I, oh, I yeah. messaged you right after watching the video. I was like, well, how much was that? When, <laughs> where do you get it? How do you get that? Because that was just cool. They did so much extra. Yeah. The, the like flavor of it all. And I was just, I was very impressed. That's like the kind of, bundle you want to receive instead yeah, of like they care about the game tossed it yeah they care like that's what it was very clear they care about the game they care about you as a consumer i yeah. i was like wow i gotta support that that's great one of the one of the guys actually reached out to me he said he watched it and he was concerned that the the caster society stamped card that i got had a bent corner and i was like we will mail you a new one immediately and i was oh. like no it's it's fine the corner's not that's bent amazing. and i sent him a picture of it yeah yeah, that's great. That's see, that's what I'm talking about. This is why I'm like, I gotta buy their next bundle. I don't care because it's like, and they do offer multiple people. tiers. Yeah, 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 for sure. So that was really cool. Though. It was fun to watch. Yeah, and all of their leading into our main topic, which is MetaZoo's Play Network and their approach to the local game stores, is all of the profits that they do with their bundles is going into organized play, is helping them put on these events, which is just awesome it's, 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 feel just, good it's all what around. they want to do it's how they're yeah. raising money to do what they want to do yeah it's awesome it's awesome they so, deserve some. yeah our main topic this week is metazoo's play network and this week there was a bomb drop in the metazoo main ch- discord uh announcement saying do should i just read it um People, it's a little long yeah. i wouldn't read the whole thing but we can summarize if you want yeah so basically mike Waddell, the creator of MetaZoo, is going to be making changes to how and what game stores receive MetaZoo product. And it is, I guess, controversial. You can take it multiple ways. We have our viewpoint. Our viewpoint is that this is good for the game. And, but it's also kind of, my first impression was Mike is throwing down the gauntlets. And he's like, this is going to happen or it is not mm-hmm. going to happen at your store. But what was that? It's either it going like to happen or not to happen. Is, you know, they're, they're pushing hard to make sure the game is actually played. Yeah, 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 for sure. And they kind of hinted at this. They had the quarter million prize pool that they put out, right? Right. Um, they had the Judge Network thing coming together, which I, I hope is in a better state than the last time I heard about it, because that was a real limiter for um, for stores before. Right. Um, and I mean, just to summarize, and this is the part that I think people missed. They saw that basically they saw what we saw, right? Our store may not be able to carry this product anymore. And they got upset, which I get that. Uh, that's a very reasonable response. But if you actually read the details, there's two tiers here. Mm-hmm. And what this does is if you are able to host up to three or three or more events a month, um, the first tier is two, two or more, and then the second tier is three, you can get your product at distributor prices, wholesale, essentially, directly from MetaZoo. You basically don't need distributors to, uh, to get any MetaZoo product from uh, MetaZoo itself. So Mm -hmm. the distributors get cut out, which is a great thing for a store because, frankly, the distributors take most of the profits and you don't have to deal with the headaches about, you know, who has it, who doesn't have it, which will I get my allocation? Yeah. Will I get the amount that I need? Like you can have a direct order and get that that amount exactly and it will be taken care of. Um, That's huge for a store, if you ask me. Now, I don't run a store that deals with distributors, but I hear nothing but complaints about dealing right. with distributors from stores. So I assume that's got to be a huge thing. And then there's a second thing that came later. So I understand why people didn't get this. Mike later clarified. He said that events don't necessarily have to be play, right? He said they can be multiple types of things. So that opens it up a little bit. It doesn't, it seems like it's less onerous, right? It's one thing to organize a tournament, right? That takes right. work, effort, right. prize pool, et cetera. It's another thing to have a pack opening party or, you right. know, I, I don't even know what other types of things, but he offered a couple of different options. He's like, it's not necessarily happening. Like, it doesn't have to be a formal tournament. It didn't. 
is yeah, what it, it sounded be like. For then. It could be just show yeah. up and play. It could be a trading yeah. night. It could be there's lots yeah, of different so, things. So I think with that in mind, getting to three events a month isn't that hard, and the benefit is huge, right? Right. Um, and but I do think, like you said, Murphy, the the goal here is to to push it into play, right? They're they're at the point where the card pool's getting big enough. Mm -hmm. The game is complex enough, right? There is a winning meta right now, I would say, but I think it's now shifting with Wilderness release. 100%. And so they're they're building that out, right? They want to make that part of the game as opposed to just collecting, which is, this is the right time. You know, mm -hmm. they didn't have the card pool before. If you tried to play, uh, I think Spirit was the one I tried to play. And I just, I like when Nightfall came out, I was like, oh, you can't make a good deck with this. Like, it's really hard. Right. Not so, all the, not all. Yeah, they just weren't built out. Yeah, but now they are. I mean, I feel like they are since uh, CN2 and um, and Wilderness. I think it really did add a lot to the uh, the card pool. So right, because not a lot of people had the opportunity to rip open a bunch of CN1. So, right. Well, that was huge for me. That was my problem. I didn't right. have anything from CN at all until CN2. But, so yeah. yeah. I just I think as it? somebody who you know, I don't I don't play the game that we've talked about. I'm I'm the comics guy. I'm not mm -hmm. the card. Guy. Honestly, the model seems like it's better for the game. And Absolutely. At the end of the day, that's what people should want. Like, does it suck if you're going to have to go to a different store to get cards? Yes. But, you know, if you like the game enough, that you do that. You know? Yeah, and there's multiple, there's lots of ways to get them online and stuff. If your yeah. store doesn't end up carrying it. Now, I wonder if this is something that stores like, uh, say the store doesn't have the player base or the interest in it currently, I wonder if this is something that they will be able to apply for down the road. Oh, yeah. Why Once, wouldn't they be? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I assume this registration is just constantly open. I mean, otherwise, they're cutting themselves off at the knees for growth, right? Right. Say, you know, a year from now, you know, our store, it's, it's up and running and people are coming regularly and like, like with Fab, like we just started going to another store in our area that just started supporting Fab. It took right. them this long right. to be able to support it because it took them this long to realize there was enough of a crowd. Well, that's going to happen the same way with MetaZoo in my mind, right? This happens here a little bit at our local store and then another store here so that's popular. And so they start carrying it. You have to be able to sign up later. It wouldn't make sense right. otherwise. Because right. Fab is, oh, sure. No, but I meant like cards or er, stores that were removed because of this, I guess. Then oh, trying to come back. Right. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they're going to. I hope it's not like penalizing stores. I think it's just here are the rules. I right. hope I hope they're not going to like blacklist people because, I mean, frankly, the reality is our store is one of the best stores I've heard of, seen or gone to. And right. and they're going to struggle. They're going to struggle to meet this. Like, right. I get that. And it's going to take work on, of the players and, you know, the community to to make it stay there and I'm you've been buying metazoo it. there the whole time like yeah. i since, with my prize money yeah, for flesh and blood i just so. go downstairs and buy some metazoo <laughs> i know so the product <laughs> has gone through that store like money oh, for made sure by metazoo and the store so it's like but it's going to take a while to get the play going you know right and that's just i think that's just how it's going to be across the across the country right and i mean with all these new games out i mean people only have so much disposable income to put into their hobbies and when For you sure. pick a couple, it's just like, eh, well, one something has to budge. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that that may ultimately be like we may be seeing the beginning of the shakeout. You know, oh, we, we talk about totally the are. '90s and all that. What happened back then, where there's a million games all at once after Magic got popular, and at the end there was what two, three. Yeah, you know, I think Pokemon, we're really Magic. That's think, about it. I think we're really gonna see it this fall into next spring. With all the sets like Sorcery and Grand Archive and all the other games coming out yeah. in September, yeah, there and are September is typically a hot month for like Magic, and there's usually a Fab set and yeah, like, there is gonna be. it's gonna be crowded this fall. Yeah, you're right. Well, I think we're starting to see the first shakes, you know, um, and and we we talked about this a little bit. I mean, MetaZoo is going through what we've now seen in every other. 
TCG market that's active right now. It's it's cooling, right? It, right. it was it felt like it was immune to the downturn. It was dropped in price for once. It did, yeah. It, and so it's cooling. It's getting more towards a normalized market, which again is healthier for the long run. Right. Um, but people get scared, right? Especially people that are like, "Oh, it's always going to double every month," right? Yeah, right. No, that's no. that is insane. It will not do that. That is a bad idea. If you're putting your money in expecting that, you're gonna hurt yourself. Don't yeah. do it. Um, but, uh, but I think we're starting to see that, like the whole market is starting to shift towards a, let's get sane here. Right. Yeah. And what does that mean? And that means things like play are going to be critically important, which I think it's probably why Mike's making these moves because yeah. a game that's played will continue to have customers, right? Exactly. A game that's not, and is built only on hyping the next 10 X of a card or whatever, or that, collecting that goes away. Or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. As you know, playing almost devil's advocate in this, mm -hmm. do you guys think that there's a chance that this move makes the game fail? Um, I it's think it risky. can, it is risky. Yeah, I don't think it would make the game fail. I think at worst, it could make MetaZoo very niche. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, because so you have. The history of like pokemon how it was mostly a collectible still is you know thing for a long time well yeah it still is but my my point is like even when it started like I, i'm imagining the early days right right it was a collectible thing it was more collectible than a playable right right and and that is what metazoo has copied and they're making a very dramatic quick in its life cycle shift towards trying to be playable and again i think it might be the right move in this condition of so many collectibles out. Right. Um, but yeah, there is a risk because it's not fault. Now it's, it's following a new path and an untrod path is a risky thing because they could, they could flub it up. You're right. You could lose momentum. The collectors may get pissed off because they can't get it from their local store. Although I doubt it. Just I doubt through. most. Yeah. I doubt most like, investment collectors in MetaZoo are buying from local game stores. I know I don't. I buy it from right. my NFT redeemable. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right from MetaZoo. Yeah, I buy it straight from MetaZoo, which I think is the optimal play. Um, and and I just don't think, yeah, I, I think it's a risk. I don't think it's a huge risk at this point because I don't think there's enough throughput at the store level to have this shift become such a harsh thing, you know? I've right. also never known a collector not to go across town to another place. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah, a collector yeah, will sure. go anywhere to get the thing they want. You're right. Like I buy comics town. from like three different shops in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I don't think you'll alienate the collectors. The question is if you alienate the kind of casual, you know, yeah. involved. And I don't really know because I doubt they, I don't know. Because if you're playing it, you're playing it, right? And this is good for play. Right. If you're not playing it and you're casual into it, what are you doing exactly? Are you just getting cards? Like, is it like with Pokemon? You just open it up because it's fun to open? Is that? Yes. And yeah. It's fun to collect. And yeah, that's there. Make people. binders of, I guess, yeah, is the whole right. idea. Set Organize it. Yeah. 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 yeah that kind of makes a, sense. Yeah, it's just collection. Like, yes, no, there is a game. Yes, people play it. But the amount of people that play it to the amount of people that collect it is enormous. Right. I never understood that part. It's probably like at best, it's probably ninety percent collectors, ten percent players at best. Yeah. When is this shift gonna take place? It's a good question. It looks like August first. It's required. It's for the new done. set. Yeah. Yeah. So these Let's conditions see. need to be met ahead of the pre-order period for the UFO set, which is the next core set slated for release in August. Oh, so a little bit before that then, because yeah. I think that's the actually yeah so over the summer they need to make the shift and that does give time like i think we could get something going at our sh you know our store within that time frame right i'm just going to push it on all our fab buddies so fab buddies if you're listening i'm going to be pushing metazoo on you <laughs> i don't want to do that <laughs> no, i don't want to one i don't want to cut into fab because i like our no, fab I, yeah, but i also I don't, yeah, yeah i wouldn't want to alienate anyone <laughs> no no Although, you know, there's interest, I'm sure. So we'll, we'll I get I get asked questions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um but, sorry, were you say you gonna say something? I was gonna say the that with um on the inverse effect, this might push stores that are seeing the bonus of 
the better pricing and seeing if they support the game, what it could do is if they push if they push play, they run sales, they run uh, pre-release events. So you buy the like the new uh, wilderness release event boxes just came out. You it's a twenty dollar entry, so you basically you buy the box and then you open it and then you have the deck to play and then you just play. And then it's like best of three or whatever, and then winner takes home whatever. But um, just getting people in the door, and you don't need cards. You just you have this box, and then there's a random of five decks in it, and then you just play that. Yeah, I mean that would be a fun way to get people going. Like Metazoo, and- Metazoo has so many products. They have products for every type of consumer. They have ones for people that are it would literally be their first product that they buy and that could be a release event box it could be a theme deck box it could be and those would immediately let them start playing and then you have the spell books which is a step up which gives you the sleeves and the auras and 10 packs and the token sheet and then you have the booster box on top of that and then you have a blister pack it's just they have products for whatever amount you want to spend and yeah. four different entry points and different. I wonder if players. that's true at the store level, though, because I know you... with some games, remember, um, I think it was George on Kitchen Table TCG was talking about how his distributors required him to take certain amounts of Pokemon when it was not popular <laughs> just to be able to order fat. In, what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, while that's true for the consumer, I'm not sure that's true for the store. Now, granted, if you get to that, that's that's another reason to get to that three right event exactly. Because then you so don't have to deal with anything. Straight from MetaZoo, yeah, you don't right. have to deal with the distributor nonsense, and you get it straight from them at allocations. They they give you a special, you know, not guarantee, but a special allocation. So you'll you'll have priority over right. other places. I think. I mean, I, if you're gonna do this, you got to go for the three a month. I would say. As a store, that would be the right way to go. And actually, thinking about this, the more we've talked about it, the more I think about kind of the economics of it. I hope everyone copies this model because we wouldn't have the problems we've had in other games, <coughs> Monarch. Um, <laughs> if this model was adopted by other games, now granted, I don't know what Mike's doing for this direct shipping because logistics networks are not the easiest thing in the world, right? That's why distributors exist. Sure. So I don't know that New Zealand could give us, you know, fab in a direct I mean, manner they, efficiently. They, oh yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean Mike's but, in in the US. Exactly. Yeah. I think I think it gives him a little bit of a leg up in doing something like this. But for sure. Boy, I mean he has just, they have the MetaZoo marketplace. They do ship from there. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I think they're they've already set up the logistics network. I don't know if he planned it from the beginning, but I think it's a golden move. And I think going forward, geez, I hope every game does this. Like seriously. Also, I'm so tired of these weird games that are being played behind the scenes and no one has any visibility into it. Yeah. I just, I want to shout out MetaZoo Marketplace customer support. You guys are awesome. Uh, so I had the Valentine's Day boxes. They didn't, sh- two of them didn't show up. And uh, it was a while and I was just like, all right, well, this is not showing up. So I reached out and they were like, oh, it looks like this one got lost. Um, we'll send you a new one. And so they sent me two new ones, and then arrived in like two days. That's amazing. Right. Yeah, so, and that was direct from them. Yeah, directly. From, yeah. yeah. So all their like promo, like Magic Cast and the uh, Valentine's Day boxes and stuff like that, the Halloween ones, you can buy them directly on their website for like the 15, 20 minutes that they're up. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, they are not usually. <laughs> no, they're not usually up, but they sell them through there. Yeah. But they definitely do keep back some for, obviously, or which is smart. They keep up. Yeah, replacements yeah. and such. Yeah. yeah, lost product, damaged, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've had no problems with it. The, the most trouble I've had... Uh, on my side is just the technical stuff around NFTs and trying to get that connected so that it redeems cor- correctly. Yeah. And they've improved it. Like it's gotten a lot better, but in the first, I think the first one I struggled with, and that was mostly on me. I missed a message about them taking the, um, 
they do a snapshot of where all the tokens are and oh, you okay. have to buy from that wallet. And I had moved it after the snapshot and uh, it still, yeah. it still ended up working. So yeah. credit to them, it still worked. And I was yeah. still able to get my box, but I, like I made my own troubles there. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's a little tricky if you're not super familiar and I'm not super familiar with NFTs, but, and also that's, uh, but it's been that's something service. relatively new too. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, in my mind, I've said this in other settings, uh, this is the best NFT use case I've ever seen. And yeah. that's not saying much because NFTs are universally silly, like just pieces of art is not what an NFT is supposed to be. No. Uh, if you read the technical documentation, what the heck it actually is. Um, and so those I find to be even like just insanely silly and unnecessary. But this this use of it as kind of like a passcode to a discount to, a you know, I don't know, the VIP treatment, as it were. Right. 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 Like that's what it, that's like a step in the direction of what they're supposed to do. And it's they're doing it actively, regularly, every set. There's something. And oftentimes in between, I got a free pack of wilderness. Uh, the promo just for having the NFT for free. I just, what? all I had to do was click and connect it. Yeah, I have it on my shelf. Sweet. So, yeah, they just gave me one of those, what is it, the promo packs or whatever, you know what I'm talking about? Like the Halloween one. Oh, really? For Wilderness? Yeah, for Wilderness. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just free. It was utterly free. All I had to do was Wonder click the what button. Wonder what are in those. I don't know. I didn't open it. And I probably won't. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have told open you that. Open it. <laughs> open it. <laughs> no. Oh, seal product. It's do it sealed. for the channel. It's no, it's with all my other ones. I'm not opening those either. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. They only gave me one. If they gave me two, I would have opened it. But fair, it's fair. just, I think it's per token and I only have the one token. Although oh, I did just fair. see an announcement. They, for anyone that has the full set, which is no cheap fee, they're sending a special, um, I think it's a sample foil card for Mike. What? So one of Mike's sample cards, holographic sample card from his own collection. What redemption will start in the next two weeks? Now you have to have one of every coin, Ugh. which is not easy. <laughs> like well, it's probably how much would that be? That would be tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, easy. I don't know exactly, but tens of thousands of dollars. Easy. So if you have spent that kind of money supporting the NFTs and, <laughs> and frankly supporting MetaZoo, because a part of each transaction goes to MetaZoo, right? Right. Um, so it, it is supporting Menzo. You're basically signing up as a VIP. I will give you money sort of club mm -hmm. and, uh, you get a, that's, I mean, that's a piece of history. That's a yeah. that's straight from Mike, a holographic sample card. That was when they were testing it out with printers. Like, how are we going to do this? That's cool. That's a really cool piece to hold as a collector. Yeah. That's neat. So, yeah, I think they've done it right with this NFT thing. Like I said, I've, you know, from being in the tech industry and, you know, knowing about this stuff for a while. This is the first time I've been like, okay, someone's someone's on the right track finally. <laughs> right, right. Because it has been a lot of nonsense with NFTs. And uh, I think we'll get to that phase where that pops too, and then it will go to things that are actually useful and make sense. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I think on the inverse side, you also have stores that will be pushed to do this. And then you'll have, like, once, if you go on the Organized Play Network website, I'm going to hit Find an Event. I'm going to put in, uh, let's see. So they have different formats. Weird. Okay. And they have, like, global and online. So you can host these events online. Yeah, I mean, or, that. Yeah. that's why I think this is very doable. Like, just throw it in your freaking Discord. Most yeah, shops have, have a Discord. Right. And then you could just do it on Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, and then P that's a great way to convert people in. They start having yeah. fun with the actual game and the decks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have your website where you host all your tickets, right, for your store. And you charge $5. And then you can sign up for the online Tabletop Simulator game and then you play and then winner takes home i don't know 20 bucks or however depending on how many people show up packs whatever yeah, yeah. Whatever, yeah I yeah know. i mean i i think it's the way to go and then you get freaking wholesale prices direct mm -hmm. from metazoo set allocations or at least more priority allocation like if i was a store i would jump on this if i had 
people buying medicine? You know, it's that is the question because I know you buy it, but how many people are buying it at the different store? Because you're talking about now effort, at energy. Our store. Someone has to be, you know, there to to judge and all that stuff. Right, and I know uh, there are people because I mean the store's not carrying it just for me. Like I don't buy all. Of it. It's all you, man. It's, it's not all you. You're the it's, only. No, I know. <laughs> I'm not the. I've been told I'm not the only one. I know. I know. But so. And they do it right. They don't price gouge there. They just they no, charge good prices. Which, again, a reason for them to chase this because right. then they get margins on this. Yes. Like real margins, like wholesale margins, like the distributor's you know, margin. Right. <laughs> Which I think is huge. Yeah. yeah. Overall, I think this is just good for MetaZoo, and I hope more stores hop on to this. Yeah, I hope the transition goes well, because you're right that, Murphy, I think there is a risk here, and uh, I do worry about, like, I don't want to see it, you know, choke itself by accident right when it's starting to get some some momentum and popularity and such. Speaking of popularity, Mm -hmm. I have to mention it, because it's news and it's interesting for people that follow us. Uh, Sorcery's final Kickstarter, $4 million for times the previous all-time high for a tcg insane and the boxes are already being gouged on ebay <laughs> i can't believe people are buying those i can't so like, what did you find out sold, about it the day after it closed yeah i mean or they decide they want more they only bought one and they're like oh you really need three to have a chance at a set and i'm telling you from what i hear uh people have started trying to run the numbers on it I don't think three is going to get you even close. No, I don't know why. The way the packs no distribute the rares. Yeah, I just no don't way. think it is. So in this alpha, like getting a full play set or a full, not a play set, a full set of alpha, that's, it's going to be really hard, really hard. So kind of exciting though. Um, I'm a little sad because this might be the only thing I try to collect a full set of. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, oh no, did I choose poorly here? Because it's oh, going to be close. Really how hard. many how many boxes do you have coming your way? Uh, six maybe. Six. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think I can't remember. I have to because I changed it a couple times. Maybe five. Maybe five. No, I think it's six. I think it's five additional plus the the core one that I bought, the okay. early bird. Yeah. And then the the elemental decks and a couple of the play mats and a couple and the binder. I got the binder too. Yeah, I think I. It's nice. Two. I mean, you got you got enough to put them on the shelf sealed. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play this game. Um, no, no, I know. There's so I got two boxes, the two player play mat, and the starter decks. Well, and that's the other thing. Um, the starter so, decks are like what fifty bucks. Yeah, it's not an easy entry point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's four decks. It's not even like right. crazy price for that. Right. Um, but yeah, the place I saw this gouging uh, is Red Zone Rogue posted on Twitter about it. People are basically buying it. Right now, the price is like 10x. So it was like $150. People are trying to sell them, pre sell them for fall to others on eBay for like $1,500. It's insane. It's insane. And sadly, someone bought one for 400 So already over double the price of the Kickstarter price. So um, that was I am, a two box sale, right? What two was boxes? that? The 400 uh, was it, it? Or was it 100 I think. No, I think it or was one box. I think it was one box. One box for 400 Yeah. When they go for 150 is Ooh. what the Kickstarter was. Okay. Yeah. So over 2x already. Yep. So that's a thing. Um, so don't do that. Don't buy no, those. No, don't. They will be putting out an unlimited or a, a like if you're worried about playing, you can get the cards to play. Yeah. They're going to put out another set of this. Um, in fact, Team Covenant has a subscription, which that is the first thing they're putting out is this. I'm from what that. I understand. Yeah, I did too. So I'll have cards for play. Yeah. Yes, the alpha cards you won't be able to get. That will be hard. But that's the nature of the game. Although, how hard will it be if people are trying to sell them? Right. You know, by the time fall comes around, I don't know. I'm not sure. And then you enter in the holiday season and people are spending money on that stuff. Yeah. How many, I mean, how many people bought extra just to try to like 
Right, exactly. Like We're at sell four them million. At two times there has to be. There yeah. has to be a lot of people that bought some just with the intent to flip it. To sell it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll have to see. We'll keep an eye on that. I'm super intrigued to see how this goes because this has never happened before. TCG has never gotten this much money. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah. Speaking of binders, where's the wilderness binder? It's still not on the marketplace. Uh probably with the theme decks. The theme decks, I have a brick of theme decks. Wait, the wilderness theme yes, decks came out? I have a brick of them. I thought they were delayed. To some people. Really? I have a brick of them. Yeah, some distributors don't have them. Some quote unquote distributors. Don't I have them. had no idea. You should scream that from the rooftops because a lot of people are talking about that mm -hmm. being a problem. I, huh. have a, I have a brick of them. Okay. Well, that's cool. I have two of each. I gave Chris one last night. What are the theme decks for this set? Um, Paul Bunyan is the big boy. And then I'd have to go look. I forget off the top of my head. So Rudy didn't get them, but you did. Are you cooler than Rudy? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yes, no doubt. <laughs> there we go. Wow. Well, that's cool. Yeah, Nita Black Bear. Which is the fire flame one. Paul Bunyan, which is the forest. Father Time, which looks like a duel. Or it may be cosmic. I'm not sure. Because there's two colors. There's like a brown on one side of the box and green on the other. So that uh, yeah, Earth. Yeah, that would make sense because Earth Cosmic is a combo. That's one of yeah. the horror facts, is Earth Earth uh, Cosmic, I think. Alpha Gator, which is water. And I think it's Uriu. U I R A O. I don't know. I'm not sure how you say it. It, looks like, I don't know. it looks like frost. Well, so. That's cool. Yeah, I'm going to be cracking in one of each of those, taking a look at them, and then giving we'll away the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. Plan on giving away the other dual, the other uh, duplicates, because I have more coming my way too. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how many did you buy? <laughs> uh, well, they were just part of the different bundles. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Oh, and the ones that didn't show up in time. Mm -hmm. so the Caster Society later. didn't get theirs. Got it. Got theirs Got late. It. And uh, so that's coming late in another box with my wooden deck box, which I'm also super excited about. Yeah, that's cool. You'll have to feature that. Oh, I will. But yeah, super excited for Wilderness. We're going to have to get some games in. Yeah, I um I was thinking about that. We should we should just do some TTS so we can do it, you know, quick and easy for oh, yeah, the camera. Yeah. Because yeah. the I, I think agree, the readability it's better than our camera play. Yeah, the readability, yeah. it just it looks a lot better for the purposes of content. So my desk let stays us know cleaner. in the comments. <laughs> you don't know. My desk yeah, you don't banks. have to set it up. Yeah. yeah, I don't have to spend an hour building a deck. I can just, <laughs> you know, import it. Click some buttons. Click some buttons. Agreed. Opposed to, you know, sorting through all these cards. Uh, do we want to talk about what's coming up? Yeah. So what is coming up on the channel tomorrow? You will have Murphy and my top five comics for the week. If you missed this past week, shame on you. Go watch it. Yeah, check it out. Um, market update. You are going to be doing the second part to your uh, spreadsheet. Data visualization. Data visualization yep. Big words. <laughs> and... I'm going to be opening a ton of MetaZoo, so that'll probably be happening this week. I think I might, after we finish up this podcast, I might be opening a box. We'll see. I was about to say, maybe we can uh, we can set for our, our game of the week. We can we can do a MetaZoo and so get another, get yeah. a MetaZoo gameplay out this week. That would be good. Yeah, I we think can try some of the new theme decks, see how we like yeah. it. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So we could do like a theme deck battle and then discuss how we felt about the decks. Mm-hmm. I haven't looked. I, I'm sure the cards are in tabletop already, but I'm not 100% sure I haven't looked. We'll figure it out. Yeah. It's fine. Anything from you, Murphy? Anything you want to touch on? No, just uh, getting ready for the video tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sad I didn't get that Batman Beyond variant. I need to pick <laughs> mine up. I'm so, I, like As soon as we finished last week's video, I logged on. And I was like, oh, shoot, they still have one. Cool. Dibs. <laughs> <laughs> Dibs. <laughs> I missed it all over the place. Oh, it's a shame. It seems like it, it just seems like most it? shops did not order a lot of Batman Beyond, which is interesting. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it definitely is interesting. Because it's one for 25. So you order, say you order 50, you get two of them. Yeah, no, I, I mean, my problem is uh, my local shop just isn't a huge one, you know? Right. It, there's, you know, like I was telling you, they don't they don't even get like one in 50 variants for Spider-Man. It's right, like, right. It, it, that's like a flagship for all comics. Yeah, not um, just Marvel. Yeah, but no, I got I got unlucky. I didn't get any get it anywhere except maybe eBay. Yeah, I bet in a week or two the price drops. Yeah, because yeah, it won't yeah. be the new hotness. But it's usually well, what happens. Video is so pumped up for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you guys, I didn't tell you this, Murphy. I was talking to Tommy about, it, but watching that video got me pumped up for it. I don't even follow comments. I was like, "Oh man!" <laughs> so you're, you're doing, doing good stuff. Cool yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So, um, and then of course, Doctor Strange. Yeah, we'll have Doctor to talk Strange about that up. next week because I'm dying to see that and hear, hear. I probably won't see it on opening night like you will, but. Not yeah, Kara so comes good. back tomorrow or comes up this week. And there's that image number one. Yeah, that was one of the ones I was going to say we, we talk about. Yeah, that might be the pick of the week. It seems like there's a lot of... There's a lot of names in here. A, a lot of multiple story comics coming out this week. Yeah. Yeah, should be a good comic week. Should be a good card week. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. And don't forget to hit subscribe and like and the bell and comment. And what else? Yeah, like ninety percent of the people that watch our videos don't subscribe. So subscribe. Yeah, hit that button. It doesn't cost you a thing, and it helps us out. Cool. Well, until next time. Thank you for listening, and we'll catch you next week. Have a good one. All right.